Good afternoon and welcome. We're very pleased to have you with us this afternoon. My name is Charles Edmonds. I'm Director of Schools. With me this afternoon I have four of the directors who will have individual programs with, that we'll speak uh, about and in a future day we'll have some more programs highlighted. We have had a very good start of school. Uh, I think it's been as smooth as we could have hoped for. We, As we look at our numbers and class size we are probably going to have to hire at least uh, four teachers that uh, will help us uh, keep from having overloads and it's hard to plan because you don't know exactly what your enrollment is going to be. But from all the departments, from our transportation department, maintenance and the various departments we're going to talk about here today, everything has started so smooth it's hard to believe. We had a, a short summer, glad to have the students back, glad to have our parents supporting our schools. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the hard work they have done. And without any further ado, I'll start here on my right, and uh, we'll introduce everyone that's in here today. I'm Andy Schneidman. I'm Director of Student Services. I'm Debbie Berry. I'm the Director of Exceptional Children's Services. I'm Dominique Slasiak. I'm the Director of Secondary Education and Assessment. I'm Sherry Fincham. I'm the Director of Federal Programs, Elementary Education, and Accountability. Sherry, why don't you just go ahead today, if you would, and give us some information about uh, what's going on in your department. A couple of things this year. We have our social studies adoption based on the new Tennessee social studies standards. And uh, our grades 4 through um, high school, 4 through 12, receive new textbooks based on those new um, standards. There's not a huge amount of change. Third grade saw somewhat of a change uh, because they are now going to be focusing on continents and so we did provide instructional resources for them to help support uh, the needs in that area. Uh, also in social studies we'll be focusing on primary source documents, uh, the reading level of those primary source documents um, it is, is a requirement that is a little bit higher than what our students may be familiar with and so that aligns with the Common Core State Standards. Uh, we have a shift from our literacy coaches. We have a literacy coach in every elementary school. They are now going to be called instructional coaches because with the new state requirements related to RTI, which is response to intervention, and basically that's just differentiated instruction for all of our students who may be struggling. And uh, those requirements, uh, we have done literacy in the past and we have done uh, math somewhat, but this is a full implementation of reading and math as well as students who have behavioral challenges. And so they will be helping to support that RTI process. So instructional coaches uh, will be within all of our schools. And then um, we will also be asking our principals to, to look at shared leadership. That's a change within the team evaluation for our administrators. And so shared leadership within the building would include all the stakeholders in the building having more of a, a say or have input into some of the decision-making uh, processes within the school. And so those are a few highlights. Thank you, Ms. Fincham. Ms. Lyman, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, it's kind of exciting to share some of the things we've been doing in student services. Uh, we worked very hard last year. So I want to share a couple, well, a few of the highlights. So excuse me for reading some of the information I have for you, but I wanted to make sure I covered several things. Um, one is um, school safety, and I think of all the areas that parents are most concerned about, uh, from our family resource um, survey that we give to parents, especially parents of our younger children, school safety seems to be the number one concern. So I wanted to share a little bit about what we did last year with school safety because we spent a great deal of time with um, updating our implementation processes and procedures. Um, one of the things that um, we have now in all our schools that we're so happy to share is um, that we have SROs in all of our elementary schools. I think most parents know that from last year, but we've been very excited and appreciate the Sheriff's Department in helping us um, obtain the SROs for the elementary schools. We already had those in middle and high. Um, we also worked last year as a district. We have an emergency. Um, response team, emergency preparedness team. We added some emergency responders in the community to our committee to help us 
in determining best practices for this community and for our schools in particular. We also added some principals onto that team, and we did a lot of work throughout the year that I'll kind of highlight here. One of the things that we did was, um, through a grant, brought in Mike Dorn. He's with Safe Havens International. Um, Mike Dorn is um, just a very highly regarded speaker across the nation as well as a work internationally that he's done. Um, former police chief, he's worked with um, the FBI, Mossad, a lot of different uh, areas in school safety. And his focus is on responding in the first 30 seconds of an incident in your schools. And so that was our focus last year of implementing some of the techniques that Mike Dorn shared with us. Our principals and all of our crisis teams were trained with Mike Dorn, so we were very happy to have him here. Uh, we also implemented a district-wide central office emergency preparedness plan. That plan was actually practiced and uh, we spent quite a bit as a district central office team in planning our emergency, prepa emergency preparedness procedures. We also updated the school emergency preparedness manual. So these are the procedures that in the event of a fire, a right, um, evacuation drill needed, etc., what the procedures are at the school level. So our administrators were trained, our SROs have the manuals, um, of course assistant principals, then the teachers were also trained. We have new emergency preparedness flip charts, which are classroom flip charts for updated best practice procedures in case of emergencies. So we spent a lot of time from the district level all the way to the teacher level. And um, then part of our plan last year was from the district emergency preparedness team to include a what's called a tabletop drill and then we call uh, what's called a functional drill. And we chose the scenario of active shooter and we chose the school of Jefferson Middle School. So beginning last fall, we began planning as a district with the principal from Jefferson Middle School, Joel Sanford, how to respond if there were an active shooter at Jefferson Middle School. We included emergency responders across the county and we implemented a tabletop scenario practice of that in um, January, I believe it was, January, February last year, February. And then we actually um, implemented this active shooter drill in May of last year after TCAPS when we went disrupt instruction. But we had our staff and our students there. And we had a, a functional drill where our emergency responders across the county came and helped us and uh, we had evaluators. We had a time after the drill to sit down and process and debrief and so the school learned a lot of good valuable information, um, how what we did well, what we needed to work on, uh, the emergency responders, our police, our fire, um, our EMS, um, all of those people that help with emergency preparedness um, were really good to support us in this event. So it was a great learning experience. This is the first time we actually had a drill that involved our teachers and students there during the school day. So it was a great learning experience and we're very thankful for the community and their help with that. Um, we had in that drill over 375 people involved. That includes our transportation, our bus drivers, our central office staff. Uh, we relocated students from Jeff Middle School to their relocation site. Um, we had Jefferson County High School criminal justice class students. So we had, as you can see, a, a large amount of people helping us with that. And as I said, the EMS, the MA, um, police, sheriff, all of them helped with us. So we were very excited to implement that. Along with school safety, we work very hard to make sure that our schools are safe and that our children feel safe. And so we um, included um, the OVEAS uh, bullying prevention and um, school climate initiative beginning back in 2011 and actually trained in 2010 and 2011. Now, um, those initiatives we have followed throughout the school years and we give a national survey in May to look at trends and to help us know where are the areas that we need to improve, where are our strengths, how are, how are we changing um, as our school climates evolve as we implement these types of initiatives. So we conduct this national survey. Our students in grades 3 through 8 respond to this survey. 
each year we share with them things like the definition of bullying. We want them to understand we're not talking about pure conflict. We're talking about instances of imbalance of power that may be repeated over time. We explain how to report these incidences and um, what to do if you see something happen and you are a bystander. So we spend a lot of time in our schools making sure our students feel safe. In this um, trend report that we saw this past year, we found that our bullying from 2011 to 2014, reported by our boys and girls, has dropped. Percentages of bullying incidences have dropped from 23 to 20%. 20% is actually the national average. One school actually reported in fifth grade, both boys and girls, that they had 0% bullying. So we feel like we're making great gains in these areas. Um, as we looked at ways that students are being bullied, we realized that our verbal bullying, um, girls dropped from 28 to 23% in that year span from 2011 to 2014. Our boys dropped from 25% to 20%. In physical bullying, our girls dropped from 11 to 7% and our boys dropped from 14 to 10%. We had reported zero sexual uh, bullying incidences, and our cyberbullying, which is something that we know our parents can help us with, actually uh, was at 5% for our boys reported last year in May, and our girls reported at about 6% that they had been bullied through cyberbullying. Our bystanders, these are students who see other bullying incidences may happen. 69% um, reported they try to help if they see something happening within the school. Adults who intervene, we want to be sure that our students know that if they tell a teacher that that teacher is going to intervene, 57% of the students reported that they knew that teachers would often or almost always um, step in and stop that bullying. That was up from 50% in 2011. One of our big areas is empathy. We want students to care about one another. And those students reported that they wanted to help others was at 91%. So we were very excited about the school climate and positive support we're developing in the schools. Um, one of the other areas that we found that we wanted to improve was um, students who said that they didn't have any friends or they had only one friend. Because we know that those students are more at risk. And we had 7% of our students in 2014 report that they only had one friend or zero. A couple of other things I wanted to share. We have a new student information system this year. This is our online reporting for attendance and grades and conduct. And all of our teachers have been trained since the beginning of the school year, as well as our central office staff and secretaries and bookkeepers and attendants. And um, it's a huge implementation task to change from one old information system to a new information system. So since July 22nd, over about the last three weeks, we have trained over 535 staff members. Several of those have had repeated trainings. We have had 1,064 hours of training provided for that last that time period since July 22nd. And so this is not... Um, reading in service, this is not language arts reading, uh, language arts in service, this is in addition to those types of in-service activities. So we have been very busy as a district since the beginning of the school year. One great thing that parents will want to know about this new student information system is that there will be a parent portal, which means parents will have an access, an online access and password to see their students' attendance and grades later on this year. Um, we also um, are very excited to introduce a student portal, so our middle school and high school students will also be able to access and look at their information online coming up later this year. The last thing I want to share is I want all parents of high school students to know about the Tennessee Promise. This is the new scholarship program in the state of Tennessee, and it's very important if you are a parent of a senior to attend your upcoming meeting with your school counselor and your student, your senior, at the high school to learn more about this information because there is a deadline of November 1st. This is actual scholarship money 
that can help your child go on to college. And it actually provides financial assistance to offer tuition and mandatory fees like books that would be in that post-secondary post educational setting, whether it be vocational school or technical school or two-year, four-year college. Once you have looked at all other gifts um, or scholarships um, to help you pay for tuition and mandatory fees. So I just wanted to make parents aware that this is a new initiative. There are very specific guidelines on how to qualify so students must follow and parents also have a part in that on this application process. So be sure to know that the November 1 is the deadline and to meet with your counselor soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Diamond. Ms. Berry, we'll go to you next. Um, the Department of Exceptional Children's Services is very fortunate to have 114 specialists and assistants serving students with disabilities from ages 3 to 21. Um, the department this year faces two major challenges, one being closing the achievement gap between students with disabilities and non-students with disabilities, and also increasing the percentage of students with disabilities scoring proficient or advanced on the TCAP. We're addressing these challenges by assessing our students and drilling down to the specific skill deficits that these students have. Um, the special ed teachers will be instructing in the deficit areas rather than addressing Common Core or Tennessee standards. We will progress monitor the students on a bi-weekly basis. Um, we will graph improvement. Um, the IEPs for our students now are um, skilled deficit IEPs rather than standards-based IEPs. And for those that don't know, an IEP is an individual educational program for a student with a disability. The department's very excited about the changes that, that we are making this year with the IEPs and the skill deficit areas rather than standards-based instruction. And we're all looking forward to seeing increased achievement for students with disabilities when we um, assess with TCAP in the spring. Thank you, Ms. Mayor. Uh, next, uh, I'd like to introduce again uh, Dominic uh, Selesiak. Uh, Ms. Selesiak comes to us from Hamlin County this year. She is the Director of Secondary Education and Assessment for the School System. We're certainly glad for her to join our staff. And she has some comments to make. We've been very, very busy digging into our data from last year's assessments. Some of that data is still embargoed, but is slowly being released to the public. And so we will be planning to do a data presentation at our next board meeting. We will be sharing our AMOs, our district data, some school level data, the ACT scores. Um, you know, in looking at this data, we, we have many, many areas to celebrate. There are some areas that we will be focusing on for improvement, and we are looking forward to sharing that with the community in this month's board meeting. Um, but another focus with our um, secondary education is we're really focusing on continuing to increase our dual enrollment and our AP participation. When AP courses began to be offered here in Jefferson County, the first year there were six courses offered. There are now 18 different AP courses that students can choose to take and the high school has over 300 students enrolled in those courses this year. Um, dual enrollment also continues to increase and we have 160 students enrolled in dual enrollment courses this year. That has increased every year and they are anticipating about 20 or 30 more students enrolling in dual enrollment in the spring. There are many Things like the Diploma of Distinction that drive this and motivate the students to want to participate in these. And the, the high school is just very excited to offer this opportunity. And our district, as a single high school, has the largest number of kids enrolled in the Walter State program than any of the other areas. Another focus this year is all of our administrators have a new evaluation model that they're going to be evaluated on. So we've been working very closely with all of the principals 
in trying to increase their understanding of this new evaluation model. And this evaluation model is really surrounding the idea of shared leadership in their schools. They're building that capacity with their teachers and making it a shared leadership to increase student achievement every year. Thank you, Ms. Lesiak. And I think there's some grants that you want to put on to Ms. Mitchell. I just wanted to mention uh, the continuation of a couple of grants. Uh, we applied to have a fifth year of funding for the first to the top grant. This is our final year, the fifth year, uh, related to those funds, and that has helped to support our STEM coordinator and our math specialist. Um, and so this will be the final year of funding for that. Um, it's also helped to support our dynamic curriculum project with our teachers. And then this will be our third year for a 21st century community learning grant. It helps to fund an after-school tutoring program that focuses on STEM. That is uh, located at White Pine School. And so we're very excited. Some of the teachers have worked really hard this summer uh, developing deeper lesson plans. And so this will be the third year uh, for that program. And we hope to, at the end of this year, if we've met all the requirements and our students have made adequate progress, we're hoping that we would get continued funding for two additional years. So those are just two grants that I did want to mention. I was just handed a up-to-date report as to enrollment. Uh, as you know, we went a half a day by Friday. We went full days all this week. Right now, enrollment stands at 7,584. But bear in mind that that might be a little bit inflated. Believe it or not, uh, you tend to drop off after school starts in terms of your numbers rather than growing because there are a few people on the road that have moved and we haven't yet purged our roads to make sure that's happened. So there, there is a chance that it will drop some. Yeah, that includes pre-K. I think it does. Uh, I, I want to thank all the, our departments and uh, the, the, the personnel sitting here today who have helped so much in run the school system and make it what it is today. And I do want us to bring in the food service personnel, transportation, and maintenance so that you can uh, let the parents know who they are and, and the, the job that they do. We have a very dedicated uh, staff of, of certificated uh, teachers, administrators, uh, all kinds of support people and uh, many classified employees who help serve the food every day, drive the buses, clean the schools, you name it. So I feel very fortunate to be able to work with such a, a good class of, of individuals and we try to serve our schools well. Uh, we try to be uh, uh, good administrators of our school system, to be open to our parents, to uh, have good dialogue with our funding legislative body, the local county commission, and the school board uh, welcomes everyone to come visit our schools and see what we're doing. And we really appreciate uh, uh, the post for coming in today and, and doing, this, uh, doing this interview with us.